Hi, Music 103B students. It's Dr. Schultz here. Hope you're doing well. Um, today, we're going to talk about secondary leading tone chords. And to start off this, uh, this video, I just wanted to clear up a couple things uh, from my lecture notes. And if you look in Canvas, you'll see notes over Chapter 17, the uh, secondary leading tone chords. Um, it's a little bit difficult to explain in the lecture notes, so I'm going to explain it to you in the video again. Now, when it comes to secondary leading tone chords, of course, you're talking about a leading tone chord. That is either a diminished triad, a fully diminished seventh chord, or a half diminished seventh chord. Now, usually when you have a triad that's diminished, it's found in first inversion. That's more typical, okay? So this is pretty standard, seven diminished six. You might find seven diminished and rarely seven diminished six four, but usually you're gonna find seven diminished six for the triad. For the seventh chords, you'll find these in any inversion. So this could be seven or six five or four three or four two. Same for this, could be uh, root position, first inversion, second inversion, or even third inversion. Now, what I've written out here is just a little picture that, that shows you um, which chord will be on the bottom in these different scenarios. Now for the triad, you can tonicize or lead to any major or minor triad that's diatonic to the key. So in a major key, that's going to be these triads, right? Major and minor triads only that are diatonic to the key. In minor keys, it would be these chords. Notice seven diminished does not work because seven diminished does not represent a key area. Of course, one doesn't work either because if you have the leading tone chord to one, you just simply have the leading tone chord that's diatonic to the key. Okay, so for a triad that's diminished, for, as a secondary leading tone chord, you can go to any major or minor triad that's diatonic to the key. For the fully diminished seventh chord, you can also go to any major or minor triad that's diatonic to the key. And this might be a little bit unexpected because we're used to having a fully diminished seventh chord only in minor keys. But composers also use them to lead to major chords in the context of any major or minor key. Okay, and then for the half diminished seventh chord, again, you can find it in any position, any inversion. The bottom part of this secondary leading tone chord for half diminished has to be a major chord, a major triad, that's diatonic to the key, but not five in minor keys. So if you're going to use half diminished seventh, or find it rather, either way, you would either have to have in major keys four or five on the bottom, and in minor keys, three, six, or seven on the bottom. This one does not work because five in a minor key, remember, is already altered, already chromatically altered from the key signature. Okay, so just to summarize, um, when, you're, when you're finding these chords and when you're writing them, uh, you'll find this to be true, and that is um, triad that's diminished as a secondary leading tone chord can progress to or can tonicize any major or minor triad that's diatonic to the key. Seven fully diminished seven can also tonicize or go to any major or minor triad that's diatonic to the key. However, the half diminished seventh will only go to a major chord that's diatonic, diatonic to the key, but not five in minor keys. Okay, and to and just to remind you that um, in major you can have a secondary leading tone chord of two, three, four, five, or six. And in minor, you can have a secondary leading tone chord of three, four, five, six, or seven, those qualities. Um, you can also have secondary dominance of each one of these diatonic chords in major minor as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to spell these secondary leading tone chords. And what you'll want to do here, these are not from the book, these are just made up. Go ahead and pause the video and copy these down. 
Okay, and also there's a couple more in the bottom here. So go ahead and pause or come back to it to it and uh, copy these these problems down and we'll go over them together. All right, let's begin with this one in B minor. So it says B, in B minor, seven diminished six of four. Now this is going to be a triad. Notice the top part tells you if it's a triad or a seventh chord. Uh, the top part of the Roman numeral also shows you the inversion, what's going to be in the base, right? Notice you never include an inversion symbol on the bottom part of a secondary chord. And of course, remember that this bottom chord always has to be diatonic to whatever key you're in. Okay, B minor. So write your key signature first. And just like with secondary dominance, it's actually very similar to spelling secondary dominance, but even easier. So just like secondary dominance, first step is to look at what's this chord in the context of the key. So in the key of B minor, what's four? It's E, right? And again, just like secondary dominance, it doesn't matter if you think it's E minor or E major, you're gonna end up with the same answer. Of course, it really is E minor, right? In the key of B minor. Okay, second step is, in the key of E, what is the leading tone chord? Now, the leading tone chord is always going to be a half step below this temporary tonic. So if E is your temporary tonic, the leading tone to E is D sharp. Okay, and to spell that chord, you simply spell a diminished triad, right? In this case. So D sharp, F sharp, an A. Okay, then last thing is to put it back in the home key. Um, F sharp will go in the bass. And we need to mark in any accidentals that are outside of the key signature. Again, these are uh, chromatic chords. They're um, four and two or outside of the key signature. Almost, uh, almost all of them are. There's a couple exceptions and we'll go over those later. But uh, here we need to mark in the D sharp. Right, so we have D-sharp, F-sharp, in the key signature, and A. Okay, the next one's in E-flat major, and we have 7, fully diminished 7, of 5. First of all, your key signature. Okay, what's 5 in the key of E-flat? That's going to be B-flat, right? Now, what's the leading tone of B flat? Remember, it's always going to be a half step below. So A natural here. Notice that's outside of the key signature as well. Now, this time you want to spell a fully diminished seventh chord on A. So it's going to be A, C, E flat, G flat. Notice the A natural and the G flat are both outside of the key signature. Also notice that even though this is a major triad and represents a tonicization of a major key temporarily, you can still have fully diminished of this major chord. In fact, it's more common than half diminished. The reason why it's more common is because this chord leads in a, more, a, a stronger way than half diminished. The seventh resolves down by step to the F, and it's a half step with fully diminished, and it'll be a whole step from G natural to F and half diminished. So it's actually more common. Okay, so A natural, G flat. Okay, next one, C sharp minor, seven fully diminished, four, three of six. Now notice we're in a minor key, so six is major. Key signature first. Okay, now what is six in the key of C sharp? It's gonna be A, right? Then what's the leading tone of A? It's gonna be G sharp. 
Okay, now here we want to spell a fully diminished seventh chord on G sharp. The top part of the chord tells me that, tells me which chord to spell. So it's going to be G sharp, B, D, and F. Now notice what I like to do is mark in the accidentals that I'm going to have to mark in later in the music. So I'm going to have to cancel out the D sharp to make it a D natural, and the F sharp and the key signature to make it an F natural. Now this one is in 4-3 position, so that means I'm going to put the fifth in the bass. Okay, last step is to put in the appropriate accidental. So G sharp, already in the key signature, B, D natural, F natural. You do have to mark in both the D natural and the F natural in this example. Now keep in mind that because this is a major chord, you could have actually had half diminished, which would be F sharp instead of F natural. But I was asking you to spell here the fully diminished chord. Next one's an F major, and it says 7 half diminished 6 5 of 4. Notice we're tonicizing, temporarily tonicizing a major triad here. So you can have half diminished. It's a possibility. You could also have fully diminished as well. So F major, we have one flat in the key signature. Four in this key is B flat. Right? Leading tone of B flat, A natural. Okay, then we want to spell a half diminished chord. So A, C, E flat, G. Diminished triad with a minor seventh, or you can look at it, there's a major third between the fifth and the seventh and a half diminished chord, right? Okay, C goes in the bass. And we're going to mark in the appropriate accidental, so the A natural is already there, uh, C is already there, E flat has to be marked in, and then we're just gonna leave the G as a G natural here. All right, A major, seven diminished six of two. Here, we're going to be writing a triad, diminished triad. Here's my key signature for A major. Okay, then we're going to say, what's 2 in the key of A? And it's B. Now, of course, it is actually B minor, but we don't, have to, we don't need to know that necessarily to spell this chord correctly. So, and we know it's B is the root of this chord. The leading tone of B is A sharp. Okay, then we want to spell the diminished triad on A sharp. So it's spelled A sharp, C sharp, and E. And we'll put the C-sharp in the bass. Okay. And on this one, you only have to mark in the A-sharp because notice the C-sharp's already in the key signature. Okay, G minor. Seven fully diminished four two of five. Now remember, in a minor key, you can only have fully diminished seventh chord of five. Half diminished doesn't work because five in a minor key is already chromatically outside of the key signature. It just doesn't sound right, and it's never used by composers. So in G minor, five is D. The leading tone of D, always a half step below, is C sharp. Okay, this time we want to spell fully diminished. So C sharp. Notice I'm going to have to mark in my E natural, so I'm going to put that there as a reminder. G, B flat. Okay, 4-2 position, that means I'm going to put the B flat in the bass. Okay, so C sharp has to be marked in. So does the E natural. G, B flat. B flat's in the key signature. All right, last two for spelling here. Uh, in G major, seven fully diminished six five of two, right in my key signature. And first of all, again, what's two in the key of G? And the answer is A, right? It's A minor, actually. And the leading tone of A is G sharp. 
Here we want to spell fully diminished. So G sharp, B, D, F natural. Notice the F natural and the G sharp are both outside the key signature. 6-5 position, put the B in the bass. So both the F natural and the G sharp have to be marked in. Notice how that's done. The accidental that applies to the tone to the left goes out farther from to the left. And this one applies to the one on the right. Now this last one I wanted to show you because it's possible that this could happen, but it, it really is quite rare. You almost never find this actual harmony. So it's more common to have a leading tone chord of four or five, sometimes of two in minor, major, sorry, um, but very rarely of seven in minor, okay? All right, E minor, so one sharp there. Now, what's seven major in the key of E? Notice it's D, not D sharp, right? Remember in the key of E minor, this chord is spelled on the lower number seven, the D natural, whereas the leading tone chord in this key would be on D sharp. So we're spelling this chord on D. And then the leading tone chord of D is C sharp, right? Spell fully diminished, C sharp, E, G, and B flat. Okay. And then it's in reposition. So mark the C sharp in, also mark in the B flat. So it doesn't happen very often to have this chord because tonicizing the major seven chord with its leading tone chord just does not occur very often. But um, you'll see some of those in the, in the workbook and also the textbook as uh, practice examples. All right, now we're going to identify some secondary leading tone chords with Roman numerals. Uh, same thing here. Go ahead and pause the video and copy these problems down on a staff, piece of staff paper for yourself. And there are some more on the bottom as well here. All right, well, the first step when identifying these chords is to put them in root position, as always. So make sure you're looking at the notes here and uh, putting the chord, first of all, in root position. So in root position, G sharp, right? G sharp, B, D, F natural. Now be careful, notice the F natural and the G sharp. Um, you can see that this one's farther off to the left because this note's farther off to the left, and this one applies to the note farther to the right. You'll also notice that the accidentals are right in front of the note heads. So it's G sharp, B, D, and F natural. Now, it also is important to notice that there are chromatic notes, pitches that don't belong to the key signature. Um, that is a great giveaway that you found a chromatic chord, right? Uh, and at this point, we've only learned secondary dominance and secondary leading tone chords, so um, you can guess that it's going to be one of those chords. Okay, so G sharp, B, D, F. At this point, you want to ask yourself, is that a leading tone chord? Now remember, in order for it to be a leading tone chord, a secondary leading tone chord, it has to be spelled like either diminished triad, which this one is, or a half or fully diminished seventh chord. So you're looking for that quality, right? Either a diminished triad or a half or fully diminished seventh chord. So here we have a diminished triad with a diminished seventh, or put another way, all minor thirds between the members here. So it's fully diminished. Uh, six five is the inversion, third in the base. Okay, now, just like with secondary dominance, you're going to ask yourself this question. Where is this chord the leading tone chord? Now, it's actually easier than secondary dominance because all you have to do is think up a half step. So if this chord is 7, 
it leads to A, right? This is a leading tone chord to the key of A. And then the last thing is, is to ask yourself, in the home key, what is A? So in the key of D, this is 5. Now you can always go back and, and double check and ask yourself the reverse, and that is, um, in the key of D, 5 is A, the leading tone of A is G sharp. Okay. Now let me go back and, and just kind of uh, reiterate what I, what I said here, and that is, given this chord, first of all put it in root position, we did that. We noticed that it's fully diminished, G sharp B D F. We also noticed that it has notes outside the key signature. So we asked ourselves, where does G sharp lead? Well, G sharp is a leading tone in A. A in the key of D is number five. Okay, next one in C minor. And put it in root position first. So E natural, G, and B flat. Right? Now notice this is a diminished triad. First inversion, as expected. Okay, now you're going to say, where is E the leading tone? And you know that E is the leading tone to F. Of course, it, it is it's either going to be F major or F minor. We don't know until we put it back in the context of that tonic key. So how does F relate to C? Well, it's number four. Now, of course, if you're in a minor key, 4 is minor. So remember the bottom part of a secondary dominant or secondary leading tone chord must be diatonic to the key. So in minor keys, 4 is minor. Okay, let's stack up the next one in root position. The root is A sharp. So it's A sharp, C sharp, E G natural. Again, notice how this is a G natural and an A sharp. All right, look at the chord quality. And here we have minor third, minor third, minor third. So it's definitely fully diminished. It's in 4 3 position with the fifth in the bass. Okay, now you're going to say, where is A sharp the leading tone? Well, A sharp leads to B. Now, of course, it's going to be either B major or B minor. Doesn't really matter. We're going to know when we put it back in this key. So in the key of F sharp, B is number four. Again, minor key, minor four. All right, the next one is in the key of G. And we have a chord spelled D sharp, F sharp, A, and C. Of course, that chord is already in root position. All right, so as always, ask yourself this question. Where is D sharp the leading tone? Well, D sharp is leading tone in the key of E. Again, it's either going to be E major or E minor, but it's spelled the same in both keys. In well, for the purposes of secondary chords, that is, right? Okay, in the key of G, how does E function? Well, it's number six. So fully diminished seven of six. Now, six is minor in a major key, right? So again, D sharp leads to E. In the key of G, E is six. Always make sure this bottom part of the secondary leading tone chord is diatonic to the key that you're in, the tonic key. Okay, next one is an F minor, and the root is D natural. So D natural, F, A flat's in the key signature notice, and also C flat. So the quality of the chord is fully diminished. Remember, it's all minor thirds. Okay. D natural is the leading tone to E flat. 
How does E flat fit in the key of F? Well, it's number seven. This one's in first inversion. Now remember, you can only tonicize major seven in a minor key, not the diminished seven. So here we have the leading tone chord of the sub tonic chord, which is spelled on E flat. Whole step below the tonic, not a half step. Leading tone's a half step, the sub tonic is a whole step. Next one's in D flat major, bass clef, and D natural's the root here, so it's D natural, F, A flat, and C flat. <clears throat> Notice the D natural and the C flat are both outside the key signature. Again, notice the chord is fully diminished. It's actually the same chord we spelled back here, but it's in a different context. As we said, D leads to E flat. And how does E flat relate to D flat? It's number two, right? You can see it's actually gonna be E flat minor. But again, it doesn't matter until you put it back in the home key. So here we have seven, fully diminished, six, five, of two. Now remember, two is minor in a major key. All right, last two for you here. Uh, e major, and here we have a chord spelled A sharp, C sharp, E, and G sharp. Now this chord is full, uh, half diminished, sorry, half diminished, right? So here we have minor third, minor third, major third. So they're a little bit more rare, but they still happen. You can still find them. Remember that if you have a half diminished seventh chord, it's going to have to be a major triad on the bottom. Where does A sharp lead to? A sharp leads to B in the key of E. B is five. So remember, in order for it to be a half diminished seventh chord as a secondary leading tone chord, it has to lead to a major triad that's diatonic to the key, but not five in minor. Five in major is okay, and it does happen in music. This last one can be a little bit confusing because if you look at it, it doesn't actually look like a secondary chord. Um, notice we could simply just analyze it as this. But you see, it also is possible to analyze it as a secondary chord. A leads to B flat, right? And B flat in the key of G is three. So you can see that one has two labels, two possible labels. The question becomes, which one to use, right? And the answer really has to do with, how does it occur in music? If the next chord was some sort of dominant or maybe a seven, then you should use this label because it makes more sense as a chord that leads to five or seven. If the next chord is three, then definitely use this label because then it's acting like a leading tone chord of three, a temporary tonicization of B flat in the context of G minor. So just watch out for that one. Um, it doesn't look like it could be chromatic, but it could be used as a secondary leading tone chord of three. Notice all the notes belong to the key signature. And it really has two labels, right? Here's a diatonic label. Here's the secondary leading tone chord label. Okay, well, lastly in this video, I wanted to show you a little bit of Roman numeral analysis. And this is in your textbook, page 281. You'll also see a little bit of information about this one in the notes in Canvas for chapter 17. But I wanted to give you some of the chords, uh, look at particularly the secondary dominance and the secondary leading tone chords. Well, first, let's take a listen to it.
for analysis rather than analyze the entire composition. Um, I just wanted to show you some of the highlights. And what I'm going to show you here are some of the secondary chord areas and also a little bit at the end of the end of this excerpt. This is at the end of the first line, measure seven and eight. Now the home key of the piece of the excerpt is A flat major. And there's no modulation, it stays in the same key the entire time. So this is going to be a secondary chord. We know that because in the key of A flat, the D natural is outside the key, right? So again, pay attention to that when you're looking at, at uh, your analysis for this chapter and also for the last chapter. Make sure that you're looking for um, notes that are foreign to or outside of the key signature. And if that note belongs to the chord, um, it may be a secondary dominant or a secondary leading tone chord. Well, let's see what we have here. Uh, B flat, A flat, and D. And the notes B flat, D, and A flat don't actually complete a full chord, but you'll notice that it's this chord missing the F. And a lot of times the fifth is missing on these uh, chords, right? You've noticed that before, I'm sure. What kind of chord is B flat, D, F, and A flat? Well, that is a major minor seventh chord, right? Major triad with a minor seventh. So here you're going to ask yourself, where is B flat the dominant? Well, B flat's the dominant to the key of E flat, right? A fourth up. In the key of A flat, E flat is number five. So this is five, seven, five. Notice that it is also in root position. B flat in the bass. Okay, now you expect this chord to go to five. It does. Here's E flat major. Again, it's missing the fifth. All right, next we're going to look at measures nine, 10, and 11 here. Uh, be careful when you're looking at this part of this excerpt because we're in treble clef in the left hand. So everything you're looking at here is in the treble clef. All right, notes here are A, E flat, and F. Now you should notice the A natural is outside the key. So that is a great clue that you might have a secondary chord here. And you'll notice in root position, it's F, A. The C is missing again, E flat. You might notice that this excerpt is actually written mostly for three parts. There are some parts of it that are four parts, but... Um, a lot of a lot of this uh, music in here is written for just three voices, so missing the fifth is pretty common. Okay, F A natural C and E flat. That's the dominant seventh, right? By the way, that's how you know that you found a dominant seventh chord versus a leading tone chord, a secondary dominant versus a secondary leading tone chord. It has to do with the spelling, right? So, of course, a secondary dominant will be spelled like a 5 or a 5-7, whereas a secondary leading tone chord is spelled like a leading tone chord, diminished. Diminished triad or half or fully diminished seventh chord. So keep that in mind when you're looking for um, chromatic chords. The spelling will tell you what type it is. Here we have a secondary dominant because it's spelled like a 5-7. A is the base. So where is F the dominant? Well, F is the dominant to the key of B flat. In the key of A flat, that's two. Now remember, you most uh, often expect these chords to go to the chord that they're temporarily tonicizing. And you can see that's happening here. There is a suspension here though. And you can see the chord is B flat, D, F, and B flat. So it's B flat major. Well, that's interesting because look at the D natural. The D natural is outside the key, right? So it, it is actually going to another secondary chord. So you might remember that as a possibility. Um, up here, we saw how the 5, 7 of 5 goes to 5. Here, we're expecting the 5, 6, 5 of 2 to go to 2. Now, 2 is B flat, but instead of going directly to 2, it's going to another secondary chord. So that's uh, what our book calls a sequence or a 
circle of fifths progression using um, secondary chords. Five, six, five of two. All right, in this one here, we have B flat D natural F. That is the dominant of E flat, right? B flat's the five in the key of E flat. In the key of A flat, E flat is five. That's five of five. Now you can see the relationship in the bottom part. These chords are a fourth part, right? F to B flat. You can see it in the bottom Roman numeral. Two going to five. Five of two going to five of five. So two to five is up a fourth, and so are the dominance of those chords. Now this works because you're expecting this to go to B flat minor, which is two in the key of A flat. It goes to B flat major, so it has a similar kind of sound, but again, it's a, uh, a sequence or a circle of fifths uh, progression using secondary chords. The suspension here, it's a 4-3 suspension, right? Measure it from the base. 4-3. Carefully, you're in trouble clef, right? Okay, the next chord, um, G, D flat, E flat. Well, you can see that that is E flat, G, and the B flat's missing, right? And D flat. But if the B flat were there, you can see that we have E flat, G, B flat, D flat. And of course, that is a dominant chord as well. E flat is the dominant to the key of A flat. And that is diatonic to the key. Now, this points out a really important thing to watch out for, and that is do not ever write this. Right? No, that's not a secondary chord. This is diatonic. So don't write a diatonic chord as a secondary chord. Notice the D flat is marked in, but it's in the key signature. It's take, taking this D natural and make it into a D flat. So this is actually a diatonic chord. So is the next one, another suspension here. A flat, C and E flat. That's one. Now notice the uh, the roots of these chords. F, B flat, E flat, A flat. You see how they're all fourth apart? You also notice that it is a sequence. It's both a harmonic sequence, but it's also, of course, a melodic sequence. Notice if you took this material right here and you simply just transposed it, down a second, you would have the same, it's the same material. This material here and this material here is the same, except this is down a second from this. You can see that in the Roman numerals too, right? Five, six, five of two, five of five, five, six, five in the home key, going to one. All right, the next measures we're going to look at here uh, this measure 12, 13, and 14. Again, we're still in treble clef, so this is an F and A flat. This is a really interesting measure because there's actually three different chords, but the left-hand part is staying on the same two notes. So first we have F, A flat, C, which is six. Then we have F, A flat, D flat, which is four in first inversion, right? Then we have D natural F and A flat. I want to look at that one in a little more detail. Keep in mind the D natural is outside the key. This is a secondary leading tone chord. How do we know? Because it's chromatic to the key. It's outside the key. This note is. And you'll notice that it's a diminished triad. D leads to E flat, right? And in the key of A flat, that's number five. So here we have seven diminished six of five. So D is a leading tone chord to E flat, which in the key of A flat is number five. Does it go to five as expected? Sure. Here's E flat major, 
missing the B flat. Still treble clef in the left hand part. Now the D natural is still continuing, so we probably have some more secondary chords. And you can see that the chord here is B flat, D natural, F and A flat. It's actually a B flat seven chord. Well, that's a secondary dominant. B flat is a dominant to the key of E flat, which in this key is number five. Notice how similar this chord is with that one. This chord, the leading tone chord of five, is spelled D natural F and A flat. The dominant seventh of five is spelled B flat D F and A flat. They share three notes, actually. D natural F and A flat. So they're very similar in function. And they both go to five. Now you'll notice that uh, Haydn repeats this chord progression. So here it is again, same chord progression. And he repeats it one more time. And this is a very poignant half cadence here because of the hold, right? Kind of makes you wait for the resolution of it back to one here. Okay, and here's the, the very end of this excerpt. Uh, measures 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Again, we're in treble clef here for this part. It does go into bass clef here for the last couple chords. E flat, G flat, A natural, C. You want to arrange those, they're all, they're all a third apart from one another. And you would look at it as A natural, C, E flat, and G flat, right? Notice how the A natural and the G flat are both outside the key signature. Now look at the chord. It is a fully diminished seventh chord, right? All minor thirds. So I'm going to put 7 fully diminished in 4-3 position with the E flat in the bass, right? Now ask yourself, where does A lead to? Where is A the leading tone chord? Well, A leads to B flat. In the key of A flat, the home key of this excerpt, that's 2, right? So A natural leads to B flat. B flat is 2 in the key of A flat. You can see the chord actually persists. All this is the same harmony. And then it does change here to B flat, D flat, D flat, F. So it does go to two as expected. All right, so this is the end of the excerpt. We might as well finish it up. Um, e flat's the root on this chord. E flat, G, B flat, D flat. That's 5, 4, 2. Right? In the home key. E flat, G, B flat, D flat. Notice that it's all diatonic to the key of A flat. Now, of course, we expect that to go to 1. And it does. But notice the chord persists. All this is the same chord. And then here it does go to 1 with the C in the bass. Remember the 7th of the chord goes down by step to the third. That's why five, four, two goes to one, six. Okay. And then to finish it off, five, seven, one. You might hear at this spot, four, which is D flat, right? Or two, which is B flat minor. So it does suggest a predominant type chord, either four or two that goes to five, seven, one. You probably end up hearing it that way. So I would I would put a Roman numeral on this as well. And you're probably because there's no A flat or B flat and you don't know which one it is, maybe going with this one is a little bit a little bit better. But I think I, I could also see that one as a possibility. Alright, well go ahead and either um, rewind the video and take a listen. Um, to the whole thing again, or go into the notes, uh, chapter 17 notes in Canvas, and you'll see a, um, a recording of a, a concert pianist um, in, in that uh, notes, in those notes for chapter 17.